You're trans too? Mm-hmm. No, you're not. I am. There's this odd idea among conservatives that transgender people don't understand that biological like, sex exists. Some, some don't. No. <laughs> I mean, I, I have yet to meet anybody. I promise you, I've spoken to these people. I think that that's hubris. Don't, don't you think that's a little coercive? Isn't that a little, little bit of hubris that you're showing here? I'm not sure you're saying much at all. Uh, could you repeat what you were saying? Try and be more specific. Yes, you, you previously said. Welcome back to Rattlesnake TV, guys. In this video, we are going to be watching our old friend Michael Knowles, or as I call him, Smooth Mickey, debating some trans people. Now, it has been a wild time for Michael, and for the members of the Daily Wire since Candace's departure, and I've weighed in on it, I've had my criticisms of them. And it's all a little bit heavy at the moment. So in this one, we're gonna put it aside and we're gonna get back to doing what we should be doing, which is destroying the lips. So with that, let's get into it. When did you uh, start to identify as a woman? What makes you say that I identify as a woman? Because I actually didn't assert that. I, I don't know. Be is it just pattern recognition? Is it, do I just look you, like one of the, one of the transes? <laughs> You're wearing a dress. Yeah. The first hint. Yeah. Have you, heard of, have you heard of a femboy? <laughs> do you know what that means? Um, now I have, but I don't know what it means. Okay. It's a uh, feminine men. They wear a lot of dresses. It's cool. But they're, I'm not a, I'm not a femboy. I identify as a trans woman. Okay. So I was right. Yeah. If a femboy pursues feminine identity, he would identify as female. You would identify as feminine, not necessarily female. I don't think, I think you and everyone at the Daily Wire would agree that feminine and female are not synonymous. Well, men can be effeminate. Yeah, actually. Effeminate. But that's, feminine. A, that's different than feminine. Feminine. What would you, how would you define feminine versus effeminate? Feminine is good and it's what women are when they act like women. And effeminate is bad and it's what that. men are when they act like women. So yeah, we could say a femboy is a, a boy who is effeminate. Well, then, a trans woman actually doesn't retain the male identity and chooses to identify as a female. When did you publicly start doing it? Um, I'd say I came out as trans to everyone except for my family members, um, because it wasn't safe in my household. Where what do you mean it wasn't safe. Why wasn't it safe? Yeah. I don't want to. I don't want to get into the uh, grotesque details, but I was in a pretty abusive household. Hmm. Um, my father was not very accepting, but my mother. Do you um, do you think maybe that might have had anything to do with, you know, all of no, this? No, the ab the abuse and whatnot didn't really. I don't, I don't see any correlation with that in my gender identity. I could see the look on your face. Because I've just I heard. talking point. I've yeah. heard, it's not just, I mean, I've just heard it from people who uh, have detransitioned yeah. or, you know, that sometimes that correlates. Yeah, I don't like, you know, trust me, I'm not, I'm not uh, proud to say that I grew up in an abusive household and I also happen to be trans. Uh, I don't want to fuel that statistic, but I'm also not going to be dishonest about my upbringing. Yeah. Now you are not trans. You're, I am. You're, you're just a, trans. You're trans too? Mm -hmm. No, you're not. I am. <laughs> yeah. what are, so what are you? I'm non-binary. I'm not a woman. <laughs> I feel like a man. <laughs> Give me a break, lady. I don't have any ill will towards people who identify as trans. I'm willing to be nice to them and to even hear them out. I have a disdain for the medical industry and for the propagandists that push this narrative. But in this situation, now you're just trying to be different. And this is a massive problem that I find with young liberals these days. And I've seen this happen a few times. They will take a leftist philosophy of some sort and then they will go along with that. And then soon enough, they'll realize, oh shit, I'm a straight white male or I'm a straight white female. I am an oppressor and I have to do something about this. And so the search then begins for whatever victim card they may be able to play. Let's have a look at the ethnicity of my parents and grandparents. Could I claim person of color if I look hard enough? If I go back far enough, is there maybe a bit of native in there? I'm 13% victim. I'm 21% victim. Any learning disabilities that I've been diagnosed with? Maybe I could swing the other way for a little bit and then claim bisexual. Ah, oh, wait, 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 no. I'm gonna say that I'm non-binary. It's the perfect plan, it's foolproof. I don't even have to do anything and you can't question it because I mean, what is a woman anyway? <laughs> And as for the guy in the dress, I mean, one doesn't have to be an expert in body language to ascertain that this individual is not exactly a walking, talking poster of self-assuredness and comes across a bit smug as well, which is not the greatest combination. And I do give them both props for sitting down and having this conversation, don't get me wrong. However, the guy in the dress was actually very disrespectful to Michael Knowles at the Q&A previously and tried to humiliate him in front of everybody. Standing here now, a biological male wearing a dress with a pair of leggings, 
Do you sincerely believe that I should be subject to punitive justice on the basis of what I'm wearing? And if so, are you willing to turn yourself in for wearing women's panties in your gay college film? <laughs> so to be honest, he doesn't really deserve the level of respect that Michael is showing him. But more to the point, can you believe that he asked Michael Knowles if he knows what a femboy is? Of course Smooth Mickey doesn't know what a femboy is. Smooth Mickey is a chad. And if you would like to be a chad like Smooth Mickey, where all of the men want to be you and all of the women want to be with you, then you have to know about the sponsor of today's video, Tej Hanley. Gentlemen, as we steadily march towards our peak years, it's important to be having a good skincare routine. If it can polish a turd like me, it can work for you. Now I recommend that you start with the level one system. It comes with all the basics, like the daily face wash to get all of that dirt and grime out of your skin. Then you've got your scrub. You do this one two times a week to get rid of all those dead skin cells. We've also got our AM moisturizer, which you guessed it is for the morning and it comes with SPF 20 to keep you armed and dangerous against that sun. And what do you know? Your PM moisturizer keeps your skin healthy and hydrated throughout the night. And what I really love about Tej Hanley is that because I don't have any idea what I'm doing with skincare and I don't have a girlfriend, it comes with a how-to manual. It tells you when to use each product, how much to use, and in what order. It is a godsend. Their products have made my skin look and feel better than ever, but you don't have to just take my word for it. They have over 7,000 five-star reviews on their website from satisfied customers around the world. And this is not something you want to put off because prevention is key. Get ahead of any signs of aging now and your future self will thank you. And because T. Shanley is sponsoring the video, they are offering Rattlesnake TV listeners an amazing deal. Just click the first link in the description and get a whopping 30% off your first skincare system and a free gift. Plus, as a member, you'll also get 20% off for life. And by the way, both gifts that you're choosing from are a $20 value and are both absolute game changers. A silicone body scrubber and also a face and nail grooming kit. My favorite is the kit because you get a little leather pouch with it. And also, this is the best nail clipper you will ever use. Proper steel, these things won't break on you. So gentlemen looking to start your skincare journey or ladies looking to get a great gift for a lovely gentleman, hit that link in the bio and start your skincare journey with T. Shanley. Oh, all right. I, I, I don't mean to be different, but you're not, you're not saying you're a man. I'm not saying I'm a man, no. And you would have at some point in your life said you're a woman. Uh, I don't think I ever said I was a woman. A little girl? <laughs> I don't know. Sure, yeah. You did, okay. But then when did you decide you're non-binary? I didn't know what transgender or non-binary was until I was 14, 15. Most people had not heard of it yeah. until recently. Yeah. I mean, it, it existed, but I, I hadn't heard of it. Um, I suppose we'll per perhaps agree to disagree on that. You don't think it existed until recently? No, I, I think people have been confused ab about their sex, and I think they've had all sorts of aberrant desires for all of history. But I don't, I don't think it's a real category, basically. So I don't mean it in any disrespectful way. Uh, I just don't think, I, I don't think it's possible to have a male body but be a female because I, I don't think that's how body and soul or how identity actually works. So I think what we're saying is that transgenderism, let's just say as an ideology, has existed for a very, very long time. Yeah. The first books that were burned in the Holocaust were about transgender people, about sexual studies. But, well, yeah, there was all sorts of sort of sexual, and it goes back obviously much further than the 1940s. People had these desires. But it is, yes. a, I suppose the difference would be transvestitism has existed for all of history. There's always been sort of, you know, cabarets and red light districts and things like that. But the ideology, meaning the view that uh, a man could say he really is a woman, or a woman could say she really is multiple, you know, they or them or not an either man or a woman, that's a relatively new ideology. Um, no. Not the behavior, actually. but... Um, we have, looking back, I mean, obviously, historical records going back thousands of years get kind of shaky just because, you know, we aren't able to preserve text that long, and maybe text even didn't exist, but... Uh, they did exist. We, have, we, we actually not, have... Not we have, for all of human history. Well, thousands of years, yeah, but not, like... Oh, not going course, back to uh, yeah, we can, Adam in the garden. Yeah. That's probably true. Um, I really cannot stand that argument. There have been trans people throughout human history. Therefore, it must be just a part of the human condition, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. We should embrace it. Just because something existed doesn't make it acceptable or aspirational for that matter. Throughout history, you can find countless examples of many, many different cultures performing all kinds of disgusting, disturbing rituals. Just because they happened and they have been happening throughout history, does that make it okay? Is it something that we should try and emulate? No. 
Y otro pesado más de 100 burra. Furthermore, you could easily have just turned their logic on them and say, well, people have been burning LGBTQ books since like the 1940s. It was happening back then, it was based when they did it, and it's still based now, according to their logic. The Mongolians burned down the whole library of Baghdad. Who are you to tell me it's wrong? Um, but we have, there's evidence of people with um, assigned male uh, skeletons in female, traditionally female clothing and attire in burial. And we have the same vice Where? versa. People, um, this is uh, one of the specific uh, examples I'm thinking of was uh, Norse. Um, there was a uh, female skeleton that was buried with uh, traditionally male burial rites and uh, clothing. Um, how, do so, they, how do they know the, the skeleton's female? Um, well, I, I said female because obviously I believe that gender is something social rather than just biological, but... But the scientists um, were able to identify it by the skeleton. We, we um, know that sex is unambiguous. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> I don't think we're denying that. Hmm. There's this odd idea among conservatives that transgender people don't understand that biological like, sex exists or that we're S deleted. Some don't. That we've that... Some don't. Some do. Uh, you obviously do. But some some don't. No. <laughs> I mean, I, I have yet to meet anybody. I have yet to meet I've anyone I've seen people clipped genuinely... out of context to look like that, but I haven't. Those people are clipped talking to me. <laughs> I mean, these are people, I, 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 I promise you, I've spoken to these people oh, on camera in some cases. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but in any case, you don't, you don't uh, feel that way. So typical obfuscation of their own ideology. I mean, it's such a red flag when somebody can't just come out and say what their ideology actually espouses. I mean, why do these people think that what is a woman was such a massive success? Well, because it's the the Achilles heel of the gender ideology. That one question makes the whole house of cards crumble. And that's because a woman is an adult human female. That is rooted in hard science and biology. And if you think about it logically, if you are a man wearing a dress and you say you are identifying as a woman, then technically you are identifying as an adult human female. That is obviously not possible. So in order to not lose the debate within four seconds, they have to try and act like woman doesn't mean adult human female. And this is why they say crap like, oh, well, that's sex and gender and sex and gender are different. Sorry, but no, they're not. And honestly, I have no time for that argument because the logical conclusion of their worldview is that there is no difference between men and women. If you can't define it, and if you can wake up in the morning and be it, then it doesn't mean anything. Biology is not fluid. Biology is objective. What? What, boy, what? I take the ball for you, Marcus. Get out of here. And now let's prepare to go deeper into the murky waters of logical fallacies and contradictions. Hold on to your hats, ladies and gentlemen, but before you get there, make sure to smash that like button and also subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and if you like these vids. Let's get to it. Uh, I, I, and have so never you're non, you're non, felt that way. Um, you're non-binary. Uh huh. You said that you came to this realization at 14. Mm -hmm. What do you think kind of pushed you over that edge at 14? Um, I think intense emotional distress at the prospect of needing to navigate through life, being someone's daughter, someone's sister, someone's girlfriend, someone's wife, someone's mother. Um, that's just something that, that, that wasn't really a role that I wanted to fill and a role that I felt intensely distressed at the prospect of needing to fulfill. What, why is that? It's, it's difficult to explain. It would be difficult to, to explain in a very short period of time. It's just one of those things that you feel deep down in your soul. You, do, um, you mean it would be difficult to explain even to yourself or you're just saying it would be difficult to articulate this thing that I It's understand. difficult to articulate. It's kind of an abstract thing. The yeah, the cause of gender dysphoria and this discomfort with your sex assigned at birth in these roles is still pretty widely debated, even in the woke scientific community. Right. And there would seem to be, even among the pro-trans kind of woke, yeah. right, a, a, a presumed uh, plurality or uh, multiplicity, rather, of causes. Like some people can fall into this as a bit of a sexual fetish. That yeah. isn't transgender, though. That's um... some guys who dress up like women will openly state that they're, uh, the, the Wachowski brothers, who are now the Wachowski sisters, said they uh, fell into their transgender identity largely through pornography. And uh, others will say that as well. Now, you might say, well, it wasn't pornography. It was because of, you know, I wanted to wear a dress when I was four years old or something. But I, I'm just saying, in some cases, it, it would appear to be more of a sexual fetish. For some people, it might be caused by some emotional distress. For some people, it might be caused by any number of other factors. I, 
I, again, I'm just I'm I'm just repeating what I've heard from the left. I'm not even stating. That. I mean, the material. I don't think the left says that. The material. No, the the Wachowski brothers certainly do. <laughs> you know, and they're uh, that's they're two trans. people. The the, the ma- most famous the material presence people of the somebody wearing that is a dress with a male wildly body. Wildly false. The material presence of a man in a woman's dress perhaps could come about as a sexual fetish. I think we agree with, on that, but I don't think that. I yeah. think what we're trying to say is that that's a very different thing than we're describing. No, that's. I guess that's what I'm saying too. That there are these. Uh, so we all agree there are the, these different uh, causes for this kind of um, identity. This is actually quite fascinating because what we've just heard there is in that short space of time, these activists loosely admit to two of the reasons why people become trans that nobody really wants to talk about. Okay, so first of all, she says that she feels an intense emotional distress at having to be someone's daughter wife, sister, and the rest. And I can't speak for this young lady's own thoughts and life experiences, but what I will say is that this is something that a lot of young girls go through. And for me, it's incumbent upon your family and friends and the people around you to be honest with you, and especially for your parents to guide you through this. And anybody watching this who is a woman or who has raised daughters will probably be able to tell you that young women are particularly predisposed to suffering tremendously from neurotic disorders that pertain to identity. And just in my lifetime, I've seen many different trends, and I'm not sure how popular they still are today, but when I was young, it was the emo phase. It was girls getting dressed up like they're going to a funeral and cutting their wrists. Anorexia was very prominent, also bulimia. I became... What? Bulimic. You can read minds. And now it seems to be gender dysphoria that's taking the culture by storm. I mean, if you're a young woman and you have all of these hormones happening in your body and you're rapidly changing and you might be disposed to some of the ills of the world like porn and you might think, that's not what I really want. There's so many things that might make you want to reject various facets of your identity. But the answer isn't transitioning to become a boy. It's not much better over here. I mean, to be fair, it is pretty good. But anyways, on the other side, they discuss how men tend to become trans because of sexual fetishes. And this is the uncomfortable truth a lot of the time. It's called autogynephilia, and it's a real mental health problem. I mean, look at Leah Thomas. It came out that that's what happened to him. And another case that happened in Australia springs to mind. There was an old football player who became a coach by the name of Dean Laidley. Dean Laidley was found cross-dressing in the seediest parts of Melbourne late at night and was arrested for stalking and was found with meth in his bra. And after this, what did Dean Laidley do? He officially transitioned. And how did the media respond? I mean, in a more sane era, if somebody was found cross-dressing, smoking meth and stalking people, you'd probably give them a bit of space to go and sort out whatever issues they had going on. But no, 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 not in this day and age. Danny Laidley was exalted for his bravery in becoming the woman that he has always been. Danny Laidley was named number 92 on Maxim Magazine Australia's hottest 100 list. I mean, whatever sizzles your bacon, I guess. Moreover, Fox Sports Australia wrote an article about how Danny Laidley stuns at a major award night on the red carpet. Alongside his girlfriend, by the way, I guess he's a lesbian now. And I mean, his poor son had to come out and front the media and drink the Kool-Aid and say how happy he is that his dad, mum, is now who, who he has always been. He said that they are closer than ever and that he loves his mum's new girlfriend. I mean, how embarrassing for this poor guy. But I mean, that's what it's like in Australia, guys. They think that I'm as far right as it comes. But I mean, to the larger point, both men and women have their own dragons to slay and they have their own propensities towards mental health issues that pertain to identity. And I firmly believe that the way that you address this is not by affirming their identity and not by just being nice to them all the time. The way to deal with it, and I'm gonna sound like Lex Friedman here, is to treat them with love. And I mean genuine love, and that is to will the good of that person. And sometimes that means being brutally honest and pushing them in the right direction to get the help that they need. I mean, I've gone through plenty of things in my life and I'm so, so grateful that I had people around me who were just honest with me and who pointed out my flaws. Otherwise, I would be still a total loser today. Anyways, onto the last. You came not to talk about transgenderism. You asked me about abortion. Mm -hmm. So you support abortion. Absolutely. And uh, you support it. Do you support abortion? We didn't even talk about it, even though this yeah. is important. You do. Yeah. You won't need one, though. No. No. no I, I won't need an abortion. Anytime. And you might not either, because you're transgender or non binary. Um, do you believe that transgender people are all celibate? 
<laughs> I'm just a little confused as to what non-binary means. Non-binary means um, I am not a man or a woman, regardless of what parts I was bestowed. <laughs> okay. What you're saying is your body has nothing to do with whether you're a man or a woman. Um, correct. Okay. Yeah. I think often, yeah, oftentimes the gender identity does describe a relationship to one's body. For example, you know, if I were to say I am a transgender woman, I'm directly asserting that I am a woman and that I have, you know, male genitalia. But or you could have gone under the knife and lost your male genitalia. I could have. Yeah. So you could be asserting that too. So I guess that's what I'm saying. It seems like you could just, all of these terms just mean kind of whatever you want them to mean. No, not really. It's, it's, it's pretty just, concrete definition. So you just said you just said to be a transgender woman, I have to be wearing a dress or look like this. But I didn't say I have to. I said that's just how I like. What's to the concrete it. definition of a transgender woman? Somebody who is assigned male at birth who identifies and pursues womanhood. Okay. And what is womanhood? Then? Not to sound like Walsh, but what is womanhood then? What does womanhood? that mean in that in that statement? I would describe womanhood as a very subjective. But concept. you just also said we're talking about things that are concrete, and that's all. I'm just trying to grab onto something. What is the actual definition of the thing that you are using to define transgenderism? I would describe womanhood as a set of characteristics associated with females, usually. But that's a from, from that's sex. a circular definition, and even the way you said it, you no, said it, I, I would describe, but I'm not asking you to describe anything. I'm asking if you can offer a definition. Because it, it gets to the heart of your um, identity, which is, you're four years old, you say, I don't really feel like a man. How would you even know what that would mean at the age of four? And how would you know what that would mean now to feel like a woman? Because there are a variety of traditions associated with ma the male and female sex, and I've decided that I'd rather subscribe to the ones associated with the female sex. But how would you even know what that is? How would I even know what the traditions associated with the female sex are? Yeah, I mean, they could be just a that, caricature. I know that mom stays at home and that dad goes to work. I know that all... But you would disagree with that. Mm, no. That you said is, you reject is, those roles. I understand what a traditional gender role is. I don't reject that it as a concept exists. I'm not comfortable with these social expectations. Therefore, I am going to adhere to different social expectations that are generally but that's assigned not what you're to the saying. opposite sex. You, yeah, is. No, no, you're not. <laughs> I'm saying it right now. Well, now you are, but that's not previously <laughs> what you said. Previously, what you said was, there are these different social expectations associated with being a woman. And I so wanted to avoid them that I no longer call myself a woman. Not that a woman can avoid those social expectations, but rather that the social expectations are so intrinsic to womanhood that I will no longer be a woman, I will be a non-binary they, them. That's what you said earlier. You see the, the conflict, the contradiction there. Yes, yes, I understand where your confusion came from. Um, so <laughs> I, uh, I don't want to adhere to the social norms generally uh, pushed onto women. And I also feel intense discomfort when being called with feminine pronouns, when being called a woman, when being perceived as a woman. Yeah. And I understand those things aren't necessarily under my control. So, you know, water off a duck's back. But uh, I feel discomfort with that. Therefore, I choose to reject it. Would you ever get an abortion? Um, I could... I could come up with a circumstance in which I would. I highly doubt that such a circumstance would arise. Why wouldn't you? Mostly just because those circumstances, I've never been pregnant. I do not foresee being pregnant in my future. <laughs> oh, okay, but what, why wouldn't you in principle, I guess? In principle? In principle, I have no saying... issues with it. Past certain points of development, I do believe you can start ascribing personhood hmm. to a fetus. What would the point be then? What Where would the you, point be? Because you said, look, there's a, there's a point at which I would start to ascribe personhood and then presumably you wouldn't have the abortion. So what is that point? Um, I, I'm not a doctor. Um, and, you know, this isn't but, something that I've you, considered very much because, again, but you, I don't you, foresee you, myself being pregnant. Sure, sure. <laughs> but you, you intuit. I mean, you're obviously concerned about the issue of abortion. You showed up to this lecture and I had to ask me this long question about it. So you, you intuit that there is some point, at least, in gestation where the baby would be a person and then it would be kind of wrong to abort well, the baby. So, so that's, that's me personally. Yeah, so I'm asking but about your I personal don't opinion. That anyone should be forced to give up their bodily autonomy to save the life of another person, even if you're considering a fetus to be a baby, even if you're considering so a even fetus if it to is be a baby even, from, what, from the beginning. So then why did you bring up the personhood thing? You just said, um, look, I, I would... That's how I feel. 
but I don't believe that the way that I feel should necessarily decide what other people do with their bodies and their lives. You don't think that your conclusions are sound? You don't think that you perceive the truth? I'm just not... You don't I, think your logic is too good? I think that believing that my perspective is universally correct, I think that that's hubris. I'm a it, human being. But but you came here to tell me that my views are wrong and your views are right. I isn't do believe that, that people hubris? have the right to self-determination very firmly. But you would you would force me to live in a society that tolerates abortion. I don't think that you're be per being personally affected by that. It's not affecting your right to self-determination. It's not affecting the way that you live your life. Right. So you're 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 forcing me to to base my political judgments on your conception of self-determination. Don't don't you think that's a little coercive? Isn't that a little little bit of hubris that you're showing here? Um well <laughs> this this is this is really this is odd. Um Wait, I'm I'm not even follow. I, I'm not sure you're saying much at all. Uh, could you repeat what you were saying? Try and be more specific. Yes, you, you previously said that it's a demonstration of pride and hubris for you to take your own personal judgments and impose them and universalize them to everyone else. And then, in the very next breath, you said that your views of bodily autonomy and self determination ought to apply by to everyone, and we all ought to abide by them. That's why you came here to tell me that I'm wrong and you're right. That's a contradiction. Okay, so if that conversation seemed quite chaotic to you, and if you were struggling to follow all of the contradictions that Michael Knowles was able to illuminate, then I don't think you'll be alone. What we are seeing here is two very impressionable young people who are unknowingly foot soldiers of a very dark and sinister ideology called postmodernism. This is a philosophy that has been very prominent since the mid to late 20th century. It aims to more or less rebuke all other philosophies and all other bits of ancient wisdom that we have acquired over the human journey. Postmodernism says that we can't know anything for sure and that there are no objective universal truths. And it's with this logic that nothing is ultimately true that postmodernism seeks to deconstruct all of the things that we hitherto thought of as truths. This is through a process of what they call deconstruction. They want to dismantle sex differences, Christianity, art, architecture, the family structure. And this is why Gad Saad brilliantly calls postmodernism intellectual terrorism that flies planes of bullshit into our edifices of reason. That man can turn a phrase because that is exactly what it is. And these young people, without even knowing it, are the embodiment of of such a pernicious ideology. So with that guys, I hope you enjoyed today's rantings. You may find the sponsor of today's video, Tej Hanley, to keep you looking fresh and beautiful down below with those links. And also, if you'd like to find my links, they're also gonna be there. And if you'd like to subscribe to the channel, that bad boy right there. And if you'd like to watch another video, boom, right here. Till next time, I'm Jake, Stratosnake TV, keeping you armed and dangerous.